Wavelink's gotten a huge update that makes routing programs and setting up your audio even easier. Stay till the end of the video where I'll show how I have my audio set up for live streaming. If you're not familiar with Wavelink, it's Elgato's audio mixing software, and it comes free with the Wave 3, Wave XLR, Wave Neo, and the Stream Deck Plus. Now, there are three main parts to this update. We have voice focus, one-click audio routing, and an updated Stream Deck functionality. There's also a handful of other improvements like visual touch-ups and that type of thing. We'll start with voice focus. This is a new feature that uses AI to help remove background noise and address reverb. Unlike previous background noise removal software, this one doesn't require that you have an NVIDIA GPU and using it doesn't add a lot of overhead to your CPU. In my testing, it took up about 2% of my CPU, but that'll depend on your PC specs. Another new addition they've added in this update is the sound check. You'll see there's a record button and we can record a small clip and have it repeat over and over while we adjust our EQ settings and other VSTs. But let's see it in action. I've got a fan sitting next to me and we're gonna set that as high as it can go. And we're going to turn off all my VSTs. So we're left with the Wave DX sounding just like it does right out of the box. So let's record something real quick. We're testing the new Wavelink software. We've got a fan going. We're gonna do some little taps on the table. We're gonna tap on the microphone arm as well. And we're also gonna do a clap. That's what it sounds like with everything turned off. But if we just turn on voice focus, and if we bring this all the way up to strong, we can see the most dramatic effect to that audio that we just did. We're testing the new Wavelink software. We've got a fan going. We're going to do some little taps on the table. We're going to tap on the microphone arm as well. And we're also going to do a clap. Now, you can see that completely removed the fan. It almost got rid of the tapping sound on the table, and it nearly got rid of everything from the microphone wobble as well. And it completely removed the clap. So if we bring this back down just a touch, we should be able to get it back a little bit of those sounds. So let's listen back. We're testing the new Wavelink software. We've got a fan going. We're going to do some little taps on the table. We're going to tap on the microphone arm as well. And we're also going to do a clap. You can see we get a little bit of that clap back. So that's why I kind of like to have it just a little bit below strong. Uh, it, you, you still want a little bit of that room sound, but if you really want to get rid of everything, strong is the way to go. So if you couple this with your regular VSTs and EQ settings, hold on, we'll turn those back on. I've got a button for that. This suddenly becomes a really powerful tool because, well, it's summer in Australia at the moment and it's really hot and I don't think I can exist without a fan going. Next up is one-click audio routing. It's more like two clicks, but I'll let it slide because it's actually really useful. I've been trialing this one on the beta version for a few months and it's just saved a lot of headache. In Wavelink, how you used to route audio is you'd need to go into the volume mixer, find your program, then select where you wanted it to go. Now all you have to do in Wavelink is select the channel, hit the plus icon, find your program, that's it. And you can have as many programs as you want in each channel. You can rename the channels and you can have that reflected system side. And you can also add and remove channels as you need. If you're not sure why you would want to split your audio into separate channels, it just makes managing your audio sources a lot easier and it's extremely useful in content creation. That's where we bring in the Stream Deck functionality. Now, as much as I love a Stream Deck, I think the best bang for your buck in terms of features is with the Stream Deck Plus. Dials just allow for a much greater level of control over what you get with button presses. And pairing it with the USB hub or XLR dock can make it one of the most versatile pieces of equipment on your desk. If you're new to Wavelink and Stream Decks, it can seem very intimidating to set up all these controls. So what Elgato have done is they've added a send to Stream Deck button on the Wavelink software that'll create a new profile and have all the basic controls you need to get going but I would encourage you to play around with it for a while and set it up how to work best for you. Now, where the one-click audio routing is closer to one click is with the use of a Stream Deck, but we're gonna, still gonna put an asterisk next to that because it requires some setup. One of my Stream Deck pages have all these colorful icons. These are Wavelink input buttons, and I have one for each audio channel I use. This is most useful when you launch a game for the first time and the audio defaults to system sound. You can press the button and now the audio is getting directed through the channel that you selected. And we can change it by hitting other buttons. At the start of the video, I said I'd show you how I have my audio set up for streaming. We're going to look at three programs, Wavelink, Stream Deck and OBS. All right, so we'll start with Wavelink. 
I have all my programs going to where I need them to go first. So Discord going to voice chat, Spotify going to music, games going to games. You get the idea, right? Where it gets a little bit different is that I have voice chat and music muted on the stream mix. And I have the monitor mix and the stream mix muted for the microphone. Now I do this so that we can split them up later in OBS. Speaking of OBS, it's a little bit harder to show off because, well, I'm using it to record this video. But if you go into your settings and we're going to go down to audio, you'll see I have desktop audio set to music, desktop 2 set to voice chat, mic set to wavelength microphone FX. Now, it's important that the FX is there. Otherwise, you won't get your VSTs and your voice focus and things like that. So make sure the FX is there. And then for mic 2, we have the wavelength stream. That's the stream mix from wavelength. Now, before we get out of settings, we're gonna go up to output and in the streaming tab, you're gonna see we've got audio track. We're gonna have that selected to one and we've got Twitch VOD track when I have that selected to two. That's it for the settings. Next, we go to advanced audio properties. Now that's the little cog wheel in the audio mixer. But what we're interested in is the tracks section. Now, if you're following along at home, all of these will be checked off for you. Go ahead, uncheck them and we'll walk you through it. So remember, track one is what we said is going to Twitch or YouTube or Kick or whatever streaming service you're going to. We want to make sure that the microphone, the music, the stream mix and the voice chat are all getting sent to the respective streaming service, right? So make sure all of those are checked. Now, the way we had it set up, we were having track two being used for VODs and clips. So this way we can remove music from our VODs and clips just by saying, okay, we want the microphone, the stream mix, and the voice chat. So what this does is means you've got two audio signals being sent out, one to the live stream and one to the VOD that gets saved afterwards. That is the purpose of having this set up the way we do. Now, where these other tracks come into play is if you want to say, record a video, you can make additional ones. So you can say, okay, I only want my microphone by itself. That's track three, nothing else. We want the stream mix by itself. Okay, that's mix four. And now we want the uh, you know, voice chat by itself. That's mix five. That way, when we're editing later, we can say, okay, we can adjust these values individually and use a reference point of track one or two to match everything up. And if you're curious about where to set that up in the settings, go to settings, recording, and you can go, you can click as many of the audio tracks as you want. So right now I've just got one, but we can go one, two, three, four, five, six. Lastly, we've got the Stream Deck software. Now, this is why I prefer the Stream Deck Plus over say a regular Stream Deck. Don't get me wrong, buttons are all well and good, but for controlling audio, dials just allow you to fine tune it a lot better. And that's really mostly what I do with the dials. You'll see here, I'm just using volume controller, output device control. For all of these, it's all the exact same thing. I've just got the device set to a different channel for each one. And we can, you know, we can go browser, game, headphones, music, speakers, system, voice chat, this becomes really useful if you're playing a game and you've got a YouTube video on in the background and it's a little too loud. Well, we can just turn the dial and turn it down. We don't have to alt tab out of the game in order to bring that volume down. Same with the music. If I'm, if I'm writing a script, I can adjust the music on the fly so that, you know, I can concentrate a little bit better and things like that. So that's my audio setup for streaming and content creation. If you've found this useful in any way, please engage with the video. That way I know to make more of these. And I'd love to hear if you're using Wavelink yourself or if there's any features you'd like to see from it in future. All right. Thanks for watching.